This is a super soft, easy, and fluffy bread with a taro filling inside. Taro bread is a bread every Taiwanese bakery have. For the tangzong starter, whisk together 20 grams of bread flour and 100 grams of water in a small saucepan. Cook it over medium heat for 3 to 4 minutes, whisking constantly until the tangzong reaches a thick, pasty consistency like this. Then remove the saucepan from the heat and set, it, set the tangzong aside to let it cool. For the actual bread dough in a large mixing bowl, here's 270 grams of bread flour, 30 grams of all-purpose flour, 30 grams sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of instant dry yeast. Mix all the dry ingredients together really well. Next, for the wet, adding 80 grams of lukewarm milk. Make sure it's not too hot. Add the milk, but save a little bit that we're going to use later. Then take one large egg, beat it up, and measure 40 grams of it, which is around 3 tablespoons. Here's the cool tangzong, which should have firmed up a bit. You want to dump all of it to the dough. Now use a spoon and mix until you get a lumpy, rough mixture. Switch to your hands and squish the flour around, add the remaining milk, and knead gently until the dough all comes together and looks like a pretty stiff dough. So something like this should do. Now knead the dough on a work surface um, by pu pushing the dough forward and pulling it back. You want to knead like that for 5 minutes, at which point the dough will still be slightly tacky. Spread the dough out and smear 15 grams of unsalted softened butter all around the dough. Then close the dough up and continue kneading. It'll feel greasy and mushy at first, but the dough will ultimately absorb the butter. And when you knead, you want to slam the dough on a work surface to make the kneading process easier. All you want to do is just throw the dough, push it forward, and then pull it back. Now use the window pane test to check if the dough is kneaded well. After kneading for 25 to 30 minutes, you should get a smooth and elastic dough. You want to stretch a piece of the dough out and stretch it until you can't stretch it anymore. And it should be thin enough that your fingers can be seen through. And when the dough tears apart, the hole should be a round circle, not jagged. Now form the dough into a ball by tucking the sides underneath and there's your dough! Now place the dough into a bowl and cover it with a damp towel to let it rise in a warm spot like a microwave for one hour. While the dough is rising, make the taro paste filling. So here I've got some taro chunks that are peeled and cut from half a large taro. You want to place them in a large bowl and steam them for 40 minutes. If you don't have a special food steamer like I do, cook it under boiling water for 20 to 30 minutes, just like cooking potatoes. After the taro is done cooking, make sure you can easily poke through it with a fork. Then mash the taro with a fork roughly as you would a potato. Next, quickly throw in 15 grams of unsalted butter, mash it a bit. Then you want to add a quarter cup of white granulated sugar while it's still piping hot so the butter and sugar can melt. Keep on mashing the taro thoroughly, leave some chunks if you like. Add some milk to adjust the consistency, I added almost a quarter cup. Then continue mashing by using the fork or a spoon to push and smoosh the taro for about 20 minutes until it resembles mashed potatoes. So here's my smooth and creamy taro paste. You want to set it aside to let it cool. After an hour, the dough should have doubled in size. Poke your finger through the middle and the hole shouldn't bounce back. That means the dough is ready to go. Now take the dough out and divide it into 8 equal pieces. Then roll each piece into a rough ball, and after you've done that for all the pieces, you want to let them rest just in the kitchen for 15 minutes covered with a damp towel. Meanwhile, flatten out 8 muffin liners to be used as parchment paper. So here's my cool taro paste. The color is amazing, and the consistency is very scoopable. You want to scoop out 2 to 3 tablespoonfuls of the taro paste for each buns onto the flattened muffin liners. After the 15 minute rest, it's time to wrap these up. You want to take a dough piece, roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thick, plop on the taro paste we scooped out earlier, and close the dough up by pulling the edges up and gathering them in the center. Add a spray of water to pinch the ends nice and tight. Then roll the dough into a round ball. Um, you just want to sort of curve the ball in a circular motion uh, with one hand and the other hand holding the ball. And you want to place the round ball onto the muffin liners and onto a baking tray they go. So repeat the same process with all the remaining pieces. And now that all the dough is finished, you want to spray them with water again and cover them with a damp towel to let them rise for one hour. After it has done rising, use a pastry brush to brush on the surface of each buns with the remaining beaten egg so that the tops will be golden brown. Now you can add a few sliced almonds on each buns for garnish if you want to. Now they're ready to bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 20 minutes.
After they're done baking, you want to let them cool for 5 minutes and you can enjoy them. These are so amazing, so fluffy and soft. The taro paste inside is so smooth and creamy. It has that milky creaminess. And I hope you guys like it as much as I do.